this is my attempt. Uh, I've had many attempts today to get this all recorded and uh, realize after I just did my last one and not having a timer, I talked for 18 minutes, uh, which I think is a little too long. So let me try to go much quicker uh, than I did in the last couple of attempts. Uh, the first site I want to start with tonight uh, is one called the Innovative Educator. Uh, this is a site from um, a lady named Lisa Nielsen, and I found her a couple years ago, uh, and I follow her more on Twitter uh, than anything else, but she has a great uh, way of just getting out there and, and gathering resources from all over the web and uh, posting them, putting them together. I commented, I commented on one of hers posts, and it was all about Google+. Plus. Um, it didn't show up uh, yet because it's waiting for moderation, so that's going to be a common theme in what I talk about tonight. But I like this idea. I grabbed this idea from here of uh, having some student hangouts uh, and actually doing it in a group of, you know, eight. Uh, students and making one of them be the leader that night. So just another way to uh, flip the classroom, um, get them to really uh, explain to other students a certain concept. So it's teaching those presentation skills and those uh, leadership and uh, organizations. So I commented just on uh, like that idea um, and I thought it would be a great thing and uh, I won't spend much time on it because my comment didn't show up. Next one I really like is uh, a blog I found through hers. It's called the Cool Cat Teacher Blog and this one I like much like uh, Lisa's. Um, this one is by uh, Vicki Davis and Vicki and Lisa are both full-time teachers so sometimes I, I give a little more credence to somebody that's in the trenches and, and I get to actually get perspective from them um, and maybe it's just comments of hey I'm extremely tired. Uh, school's tough, and so I can relate to that. But the one I, I commented on hers was about uh, cell phones, and uh, she gives. It was pretty interesting, but she talks about making a case for cell phones in schools. And this is actually a pretty old article from a couple years ago. I didn't realize that when I read through it and commented on it. But uh, she gives a top ten reasons why they should be allowed in schools, and uh, I wrote a comment about her number 10 that says you're fighting a losing battle anyway and my comment didn't show up but on her front page you can actually see that um, somewhere down here that my comment um, it actually did show up in the front just as still as waiting to be moderated but uh, I told her story at our school that we really push to teach the students the difference between it using the technology as a tool and using the technology as a toy. And so um, I shared a couple of stories of things that have happened um, at my school and I just think she's dead on on this idea that you know you can't fight them. Students are going to use the technology anyway and why not uh, use it to your advantage instead of having to constantly micromanage uh, the fact that they're going to have it looking down, pulling it out of their pocket. Some kids can type while it's in their pocket, so it's pretty amazing. Another site I went to that uh, I just found today was called Two Cents Worth, and uh, this site was by a guy named David Warlick, who has done some TED speaking, uh, is from Canada, does a lot of work throughout Canada and, and some in the U.S., um, and his blog that, uh, the first site that I commented, or post I commented on, was called The Fantastic, and it was just basically about how you know so much so so often we're just as teachers they just put all this pressure on teachers for uh, state testing and doing this and doing that and, and realize teachers um, miss out on this idea of like creating an environment where students would actually uh, f their brains be forced to be opened up forced to be think things in a different way and just this whole idea of wonderment uh, when you were a child um, and how that gets, should still be a part of your class even throughout high school. So I comment on his um, and it doesn't show up there because it says it's waiting to be moderated. But I talk about, hey, I completely agree and uh, I talk a little bit how, you know, in the future things are going to change so much as it is now. We need to teach some of the, the foundational stuff 
uh, and I talk a lot about how in my classroom I don't get so caught up on the program we're learning because it's going to be the specifics of the program are going to change in the next couple of years. So um, more the foundational and having the kids being able to uh, ask questions themselves and figure things out themselves and not be spoon fed by the teacher. Another side I really liked was a 21st century principal and this was a little bit different than the others. I chose this one because it's much more of a technology leader um, and this one has a lot of things that uh, it gives a lot of top 10 list and I like this one um, from Wednesday September 5th it said 10 things school leaders do to kill a teacher's enthusiasm for technology and uh, I couldn't agree with it more. I posted about four or five times uh, and it just kept disappearing. Well, I guess it's waiting for to be moderated. So Mr. Robinson might see uh, many posts from me. One of my last ones was just talking about uh, what do you think as a principal is the ultimate or the optimum time to give students to adapt or give teachers time to learn a new technology before you expect them to actually implement them. Uh, and so, and I said, should the training be right away before school? Um, adding another thing onto their plate. Other sites I've mentioned, um, and uh, I'll add, is just the dangerously irrelevant with Scott McCloud, obviously, and some of you have talked about that one today. And this one I really enjoyed. Uh, it's called um, 21st Century Educational Technology and Learning, and it has this kind of great kind of narrative about advice from a, uh, an analog native to a new digital native uh, that's a new teacher. And basically that's saying in the end don't forget the kids you have all these bells and whistles and great technology don't forget the relationship with the students um, I organize these all under Google Reader and put them all together um, I don't have a blog currently I've gone back and forth I've started many blogs throughout the years and always have to lead them and I'm realizing now that I, I just need to do it uh, I need to just get my ideas out there my thoughts um, and really start adding to the conversation. I think blogs are best when they can uh, bring about thoughts, bring about discussion, uh, and also I like blogs that just give me some resources, give me something that I can use right away uh, and to make my life easier as a teacher and actually to help students, uh, student learning. Uh, so I set alarm this time so I wouldn't go 18 minutes uh, and I've gone seven so um, with that said, or maybe seven and a half, um, this is how I organize everything. I put down different folders uh, based on administrators, kind of advice for administrators from that perspective. Some of these I put just teacher specific and then uh, I look at a lot of other blogs. So have a good night.